Gentlemen, hey, congratulations on your new film, Breakwater. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Yeah. Hey, more of a congratulations. I, I understand it's being showcased uh, this week at CineQuest right now. So uh, how do you guys feel about that? Yeah, so CineQuest is, I think, you know, what is going to be actually a kind of a perfect option for us as a, a, you know, as a premiere. It's actually the world premiere, so it's not just showcase. We're starting there, and it's, a, you know, the first time showing it uh, on the West Coast. And, you know, one of the things I'd always hope with this movie is we shot it to have a big, kind of a big scope, right? So I thought, well, are we going to see it? Are we ever going to see it in a big theater the way I'd sort of imagined? Uh, well, we've got a 1,200 seat theater with the California Theater uh, at CineQuest, and so they really put it as a centerpiece um, of you know of their lineup, and we couldn't be happier with the with the venue that we've snagged there. Most Just a caveat, we couldn't be more thrilled, and the fine folks here at you know at CineQuest, they've worked so hard uh, to help us independent filmmakers bring our stories to the world. So for that, we are inter eternally grateful. I think uh, I think that's actually terrific. I mean, uh, Cin CineQuest viewers and um, future audiences would love this. But we have to ask, and I think James is the one who answered this, is where the original idea came from. So I've always loved these stories about these little kind of outposts in America and other places in the world where people sort of go to start over, maybe even hide from their past lives. And um, and I was traveling down the coast um, and stopped in a little town in North Carolina. I'm from North Carolina, but uh, um, I'm from the mountains, from the western part of the state. I stopped in this little town, Kerala, and it's uh, it's kind of an isolated town at the northern tip of the Outer Banks. And I and I saw just these great kind of it was almost a, a a back lot there that was built for making a movie. There's this great lighthouse, the Currituck Beach Lighthouse. There's this these just great old sort of boat houses and things. But when it's in the off season, when there's no when there are no tourists around, when all the tourists go home, it is very quiet and isolated and a little spooky. And I thought this is a great place to build a thriller around, you know, in that very classic kind of thriller way that somebody is sort of trying to get away from from everything and picks a place that they think no one no one will look. And lo and behold, um, you know, all these stories converge in, in that very cinematic locale. And uh, so, yeah, it was traveling through Corral in North Carolina and deciding that these two things would converge. You know, my, my love of kind of people sort of trying to escape their past. And at the same time, uh, my love of these these kind of real cinematic, you know, places that uh, that have that have been the locales for so many thrillers that I've loved, classic thrillers in the past. It, it always makes me wonder if uh, small towns are perfect places and it also uh, makes me suspicious of booksellers uh, after watching a film like this. <laughs> yeah, right. There's a lot of small town bookstores where things go down, you know, <laughs> where people pass through and learn information, which is what happens here, sure. So um, the small town you visited, was not was that the the where the film production was or did you have to choose a new location yeah partially um matt can speak to that you know a lot of times you know you know when we're making a movie we have to we have to go to a place where we can get crew we have to go to a place where we can you know where we can put up the the cast and and we can shoot it efficiently but i have to say i have to hand it to our producer matt paul because you know, we we worked on this idea of, OK, we have a lighthouse that is a, a, a big set piece in the film. Where is it going to be? Should we find a lighthouse in Wilmington, North Carolina, near where we were shooting most of, of, uh, of principal photography? Or do we go to the actual place that inspired me? And, uh, you know, one day Matt said, there's just no other options. We're going to we're going to make it happen. And uh, and so he he moved the company all the way up the coast for a few last days of shooting that gave us that really rich you know, uh, backdrop. It was a bit of a tussle, but I have to be, I'm really grateful to my fellow financiers on this for backing me. And it gave us the freedom to be able to make this into the large scale picture that you see, uh, to leave the confines of North Carolina and bring the camera to the true Outer Banks and show, thereby showing audiences, you know, parts of the world that they don't usually get to see. So where, where was, where did the small town take place and which lighthouse did you end up using? 
we were at the Kerala Lighthouse, right? The uh, James they call Kerala. it the, they call it the Kurtuk Beach Lighthouse, but it's Kurtuk in the town Beach. of Kerala, North Carolina. I mean, just right at the tip of northern tip of the coast in the Outer Banks, uh, right before the Virginia line there. In fact, you can't even drive any further north. You have to go south to then go north again. So uh, that that's how isolated it, it sort of is, is you, you know, if you wanted to drive on up into Virginia, you'd, you'd have to go all the way around and back up. And so it's this little spur uh, in the northern area of, of, of Kerala, North Carolina. But most of the film was shot in, in Wilmington, uh, North Carolina. And uh, I love shooting there. Great crews and, and great people. And and honestly, really good locations there, too. We got a lot of production value out of that area. Well, th those uh, locations do look beautiful. I probably will have to try to visit uh, during the tourist season someday. But um, I guess this is, this is probably a question for Matt. Then uh, um, tell us about uh, the prison scenes that uh, that's actually uh, used as the set for um, this film. Was it an actual prison that was was actually picked out? It was. It was an actual uh, prison uh, out in Aberdeen, the middle of North Carolina. And I have to really hand it actually back to James on this one because his relationships with uh, key members of the state actually helped us get this uh, this prison. The prison had been shut down a couple of years earlier and then turned over to uh, the State National Guard. Um, and so we got to go and film there actually for free because of this relationship that uh, James has kept up over the years. Yeah, it was great. The National Guard had come through and done some training there right before we got there. So they had cleaned the place out. When I was scouting it, it was pretty dark and, and dingy and uh, and frightening. Uh, it was one of those prisons that people actually go to to sort of, well, I shouldn't say that. There are prisons around the country that people try to sneak into. And uh, it's a sort of a thing that people do uh, looking, you know, ghost hunting or what have you. And this prison, you know, was an abandoned prison. They had to they had to guard the prison from you know people kind of trying to slip in, and and uh, I think that's true of all all prisons that get uh, shut down. So it was not in great shape when we got there, uh, but then it had been cleaned up when we finally ended up shooting. When we were doing our our location scouting, uh, it was scary. There was still stuff written on the walls from the inmates um, that I could not say in this podcast. <laughs> um, it was uh, it was it was some dark stuff. And it actually, I think, was inspiring for the actors to be in these actual prison cells uh, where inmates had been kept and to get a sense of what that must have been like. Now, I I, I saw some um, of your behind the scenes uh, photos with everyone with masks on, uh, during, um, you know, for the, some of your uh, prison stuff. That must have been uh, that must have been challenging at the time you know, to be filming in such close quarters with uh, so many people in uh, in one location. Yeah, we, we shot in November of 2021 during a lull in COVID, and we were not the only production to do so. Uh, you know, crew and equipment were really, really hard to come by. I never dreamed that I'd be shipping in trailers from halfway across the country or dedicating 17% of my budget to ensure that my cast and crew remain safe from the pandemic. I'm happy to report, though, that we, we were quite safe um, and we managed to get uh, the whole production off without a hitch. Yeah. James, t tell us your uh, directing approach uh, towards this film because, uh, you know, bulky camera equipment is actually one thing, but, uh, you know, prison scenes, they're, you know, they're very tight quarters. A lighthouse is probably not the easiest place to actually film scenes or even you know the rocks on the shore or even scenes on a boat um at night i mean this is this is i don't know why you want to challenge yourself you could have just picked something easier like a wide open football field or something yeah, yeah. and we also added animals and a and a and a um, a minor uh, you know a child actor to the to, to the mix just to make it a little more challenging yeah i wasn't always popular because of some of these choices you know i mean people loved I think people were behind the movie. They really loved what we were going for. They really loved that we were taking a big swing with this and we were trying to do a lot. And uh, it, it is, it's all practical locations. And we move uh, from one location to another quite a bit. We, there's no real central location where we stay for the whole movie. And that is always a challenge because you're, you know, you're resetting every time. You know, you don't get sort of into the groove 
of when you're on a um, you know when you're on a soundstage or where you're somewhere where you have more control. But there's also a, a kind of energy to it that people, if if they really embrace it and they really you know dive into it, there's an energy to being you know in those kind of hard four walls of a prison or having to negotiate the you know uh, the, the the stairwell in a lighthouse that I think is really helpful for the actors. I think it's, you know, it feels, I think, more real in the moment for them. And, uh, but at the same time, you certainly had times when the actors were looking at me like, we're going to do another take. And and I'm, you know, I have to jump in the water again. And, um, you know, I thought about a lot about what they went through on Jaws, uh, you know, in the whole third act of Jaws, where the, where the boat keeps, you know, moving around the wrong way and it keeps floating and they're seeing the land and then suddenly they have to reposition everything. Um, you know, we didn't quite have that much time on the boat as you have at the end of Jaws, but we had a good chunk. And um, and I'll have to say that it was, you know, Matt actually sort of came to the rescue a couple of times. And Matt's a former Navy SEAL. I don't know if you knew that. But so he knew a lot about, you know, dealing with these kind of maritime uh, issues. And and we uh, we had a lot of, you know, a lot of him kind of going in and saying, hey, we need more anchors on this or we need. You know, so you've got the, the lead creative producer coming in and actually moving boats with his hand. Um, but uh, but I I love that kind of filmmaking. And it's just one of those things that everybody on board just has to sort of say, yep, we're going to do this. We're 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 all in. And I have to say, our, our cinematographer, Kai Krauss, was all in. He had to hand handhold all of that stuff. You know, we had we had these all these stabilizing you know pieces of equipment and things that we started off with. And we realized they just weren't working well enough. And I said, Kai, you're, you're a great operator. Handhold. Anytime we're on a boat, the, the camera is on your shoulder. And uh, and he pulled it off uh, fantastically. <laughs> Man, I'm actually surprised as a producer, you're you're on board with all these uh, challenging shoots here. <laughs> oh, I absolutely loved it. I mean, to see Kai Krause, uh, our great cinematographer, who actually has a huge fear of heights, uh, conquer his fear in order to put the camera into extraordinary places for us was was amazing. And uh, I'm happy to, uh, you know, be the captain and champion for people being brave, if that's what it takes. <laughs> now, of course, the uh, underwater scenes, was that uh, filmed in a in a tank? Obviously, you weren't in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we did uh, things in most of our shots in tanks, uh, several tanks, actually. Some of the biggest challenges were uh, first tank that we used was uh, the Wilmington um, the University, the, University dive, the dive tank, uh, the dive pool, right. the, uh, which the is university. heavily chlorinated. So you've got actors who are coming up with these raw red eyes and uh, got to really do a shout out here to Mr. Dermot Mulroney, who uh, was just the biggest champion for everybody. One more take. We can do it. We can do it. Even though, you know, James is just repeatedly drowning him and poor Darren Mann in this highly chlorinated water. Fortunately, after that, we went for some tanks that were uh, less chlorinated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to say too much about what happens underwater because certainly there's a there's a whole mystery to how they get there, you know. Um, but uh, but it was it was a challenge, and and it was again part of the the environment, the world of the story that we really wanted to get a sense of. You know, Darren is a crab fisherman. You know, Darren Mann, who plays Dovey, he's a he's a crab fisherman, and his father's a crab fisherman. And every once in a while, he's got to go underwater and untangle a crab pot. And we just wanted to show that. We just didn't want to, you know, be at the top and sort of waiting for him to come up. And uh, and so we we really take the audience there. And um, and, you know, it, it worked out. It, it really and also our visual effects team, um, you know, automatic visual effects. They they did a lot. No green screen in this movie, by the way. So everything you see the actors doing, they're doing. Uh, and uh, but. We certainly need to enhance that with visual effects, and and we got a really good, I think, grounded, realistic VFX um, uh, look to the film. Well, let's talk about your cast. Uh, you have Darren, uh, Alyssa, um, the Alyssa Goss, right? Darren, man, sure. Yeah, um, talk talk about the, um, th those two uh, for for them. Um, why why were they perfect for their roles? Well, so. You know, Alyssa, I thought she just had a, a bit of a sense of mystery when I met her. I mean, we, we were having to do a lot of these auditions on, uh, you know, over Zoom, um, you know, and uh, and so I uh, I just was looking for somebody that had a little something where I was questioning a bit, 
who is this person? I want to know more about her. Uh, and also someone who in the auditions felt like they were, they had a secret, they were withholding something, you know? Um, and she was, she, she, I thought that she conveyed that. And, and I thought she was um, fantastic at being, again, without telling too much, being who we think she is in the film. And then also in, in some ways, we, we unpeel those layers of her character in a way I think that's so satisfying. Um, and, uh, and, but, uh, but Darren um, was more about, I had seen Darren in a couple of things I was really impressed with him uh, in. And uh, uh, Giant Little Ones was a film that he had done that I thought was really strong. And, um, and I also thought that Darren is, is one of the most committed people I've ever worked with. I mean, Darren is really all in for anything. Um, he does his he does his homework. He comes with ideas he, in the moment. He's he's giving a lot to other actors. Um, and you when you have to do things with him that are physical, um, he's an athlete. You know, he he was a hockey player. So he comes from a background where he's not afraid to step in and do a stunt and, um, you know, do it safely, but do it in a way that, you know, feels really real. And uh, and and both of them, you know, you, you hope what you always hope is you'll get some rehearsal time with everybody and it never happens. So you have to sort of find that those the chemistry among your actors early on in, you know, in the hotel room uh, at dinner and then on set in the early days, you're sort of figuring out those dynamics. And uh, fortunately, we picked the right people, you know, and, and they just they found they had that chemistry and. And they they all had a bit of that sense of mystery that I was looking for. Well, that's a that's a lot of respect, and it's also respect the fact that you have Dermot uh, in this film. I met him once, and I find him a very funny guy. But it, he's he's on the str string of uh, vil villainous streaks uh, lately for his projects. I know he is. I wish we, you know, I wish that like this was the first one people were seeing with him being the villain. But I think people started to realize, wow, this guy's got an amazing face. He has a great intensity, uh, you know, as an actor, but he does. You're right. He is so funny. And he's got a bit of that like thing that, you you know, you can't quite teach somebody or ask somebody to do. They just have it. It's a, it, he comes at a line or a moment sideways, you know, and it gives it a kind of dark humor that I think for a thriller is really necessary. You know, we didn't want his character to just be. You know, and again, without revealing too much, we we wanted his character to be empathetic in a way, you know, and, and I think we do empathize for him um, even later in the film as things become more intense with his character. Uh, so, yeah, he he just Dermot has that thing. He's got he's got the craft, but he also just has that thing where he, you know, he can turn a moment in, in a really unique way and make it really compelling. He makes us lean in, you know. Most excellent. Well, one one last thing uh, before before I go, um, the the, uh, the mast of the uh, sunken ship off off the sea. Um, obviously, you didn't find a sunken ship off off the coast uh, somewhere, but could you could you uh, tell us about the importance and symbolism um, for that for those people who don't understand? Yeah, so uh, I mean, and then I'd love for Matt to talk about just how we did it, because, again, that's another practical thing that you would normally think would be all VFX, but was done practically with some VFX enhancement. I liked this idea. So the movie, very, very much of the movie is about people trying to move on in their lives, trying to start over. In fact, everybody in the movie is trying to start over in some way. And it's this idea that we may try to start over, but that our past might not be done with us, Right that we are still, you know, we're still kind of stuck on or beholden to the things, the, the mistakes we've made, the choices we've made in the past, and we have to deal with those things before we can move on. And so really the, the mask was just sort of a representation of that. You know, this, there is, there is, I don't want to, well, again, there is a historical context in which Alyssa places the mast, you know, in her mind. This mast that's come up outside the Outer Banks, nobody knows what ship it's, you know, attached to. Nobody knows where it's from. It's just a mast sitting on the water. It's part of a ship that turned over in a storm. And so everybody has their own ideas about where that ship is from. And so that was really, I think, for me at least, I, I wanted a strong visual that pointed to this idea of a past in this particular area because 
a lot of what we were going to do with the characters in the film was going to be pointing to their pasts um, and uh, and creating a kind of mystery around that. Well said. So to do this, we had to create this this mast, which uh, our uh, set deck team helped us, led by Michael Clausen. Uh, we we built this mast, and then we had to get it into the water. So I had to call upon. Uh, the training that I had received early in my SEAL career to take a dive team and lead them underwater to scout this lake, to ascertain what the slope angle of the lake was so that we could sink this asset safely into the water, attach it to the bottom of the lake, and be able to utilize its movement properly over and over again to get the multiple takes that we needed. Well, that could have fooled me. So, <laughs> gentlemen, hey, thank you very much uh, for this conversation uh, for Breakwater. It is it is an excellent film and it's an excellent selection to uh, Cinequest. So uh, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, absolutely. People should watch this on the big screen. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, man. I really enjoyed talking about it. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.